What's up guys, welcome back to Rugged Adventures. Man, when I do these videos, especially these versus videos, and things don't go the way that the viewer wanted them to go, or their caliber, or gun doesn't win, boy, do they get upset. And you'll hear them saying all sorts of things about why this didn't do this and why this didn't do that. They'll even accuse me of doctoring the videos so that they go one way or another as if I give a damn about how these things uh, work out whatsoever. I have bought all of these guns, so I like all of them. I like all of the calibers. I like really all firearms and outdoors type of stuff. And YouTube ends up paying me to do it. So I honestly don't care. But every once in a while, we'll get some great feedback and comments from you guys out there. And it gives me ideas to make uh, more videos. And so the one that's been the most popular lately has been my AK-47 versus AR-15 video where we look at what they can penetrate through wood, concrete, and steel. And for the most part, I was just using 55 grain rounds for those. And a lot of folks out there commented, you need to use 62 grain M855s or the 72 grain bullets would have easily punched through. And so that is what I'm bringing to you today. We are going to actually compare those different grain weights. We have this just run-of-the-mill junk uh, 223 Remington 55 grain uh, bullet from Tall Ammo. And you know the, the rifle that we've been using to shoot these out of, and I don't know if you can see, if you'll be able to see that on the video or not, but it is chambered in 5.56. It is a 1 in 8 twist rate. And so coming out of that, uh, that 5.56 chamber, it may actually run a little bit slower than your typical 5.56. We also have uh, these PM MC556 uh, M855 62 grains. This should have the steel core penetrator in it. And we have uh, AAC 77 grain 556, which we can uh, test to see which one can uh, do better against our one by one by one wood block, a uh, block of concrete, a solid block of concrete, and our couple pieces of steel. Now, for the most part, 556 uh, 223 eats up the quarter inch steel that we have. So we have 38 steel today. It's got a couple of uh, previous holes that we have painted over, and we have this half inch block that you know none of the bullets have been able to get through so far from our intermediate caliber. Uh, our rifles. So here we go with our wood block test. And what I've done is I've loaded up these magazines so they come out in order. It'll be 55, 62, 77, and then we'll go down to the block and see how each one of them did. Here we go with the 55 first. And then we'll do the 62. And the 67. And we kind of put them uh, right to left across the the block down there. So we've got the 55, the 62, and the 77. These are all just old bullet holes that I didn't want to get confused. I was almost certain that some or all of these would have come all the way through, but it doesn't look like it. This is a crack that was existing in the wood before uh, I started this. Let's tear this thing apart and see where uh, these all ended up. So we've gotten this thing completely torn apart and there is a clear winner. It is the middle one here, our 62 grain M855 green tip. The thing is, is that the 77 grain probably didn't get exactly a fair shot at this because of what we'll see here in a minute and because it does have that uh, plastic tip on it. Now, when I was looking for 77 grain bullets, all I could really find were hollow points and open tip bullets. So I was hoping that this, uh, this tip bullet would give us the kind of penetration that we were looking for and maybe it will come up uh, more with the bullet weight and the concrete and the metal test but in this case uh, it pretty much didn't do uh, it nearly as well as the other bullets and it also caught an unlucky break and we'll get to that here in just a second as we go through here you can see that that 77 grain bullet started to open up right away this is your 62 and 55 so you know it's doing what it's supposed to do as far as putting the energy into the target and it stopped, let's see, one, two, onto the third board. And this is what I'm saying when I caught an unlucky break, just a giant knot. But you know, a lot of times people ask me about how things are going to be in real world or they tell me that it'd be different in real world. And this is a real world test. Sometimes bad things happen. And it ended up here in the third board for only about four or so inches of penetration. The 55 and the 62 are continuing on, but as you can see, the 55 is already starting to get unstable. 
Uh, it just continues. We see no more 77, just 62 in the 55. The 55 stops in this board right here. You can just barely see the tip of it. The 62 is continuing on. So this is the backside of that board. So that's uh, one and a half, three, four and a half, six inches of wood here is what this 55 was able to get through. Now the 62 just continues to truck along and starts getting unstable in the back of this one and the whole stack of this stuff is getting unstable. But uh, it goes through and stops here on our one, two, three, four, five, sixth board, which makes that, uh, what, nine inches of wood that it was able to penetrate. That is the slug right there. I can't get it out with my finger. But in this case, the 62 grain is by far the, uh, the clear winner of this one. Let's set up some concrete blocks and blast those. I'm hoping that with these bricks that we are going to have a more kind of apples to apples comparison because it's just one hit and all the weight and all the energy should hit it. We have loaded up these magazines in the same fashion with the 55, the 62, and 77. We'll do the same uh, right to left pattern and see what results we get with it. All right, first up, the 55. <laughs> Looks like it took a pretty decent chunk out of it. Next is the 62. And that didn't do as much, doesn't look like anyway. Now the 72. And that one also punched a hole from here, but didn't look like it cracked it. We'll go down and take a look at the actual results. This is with our 55 grain, just, uh, you know, 223. It's not even actual uh, 556 NATO. It punched a hole in here, cracked the entire block. And you know, this is this is now two pieces that we can use maybe for a later video of uh, the uh, 223 subsonics versus an actual 22, because a lot of people said that that's essentially just the same thing. So we'll give that a shot in the future. So subscribe for that. Our 62 grain uh, bullet here, it made a nice little hole. And I don't know if this is a part of the, it having the steel penetrator that it, you know, bored a larger hole. But in general, it didn't do much damage other than that. It didn't come out of the back here. It didn't crack the block. And uh, when you look at the, the 62 versus the uh, 55, there is there may be something with the, that this has actually more energy than the 62 or maybe that this one just deforms more and was able to put uh more energy in a bigger spot and not cause the crack i don't know but or you know maybe there was a, a flaw in the concrete uh, you know i'm not running a science lab here so i'm not sure now this is the 77 and it also bored a pretty decent hole in there i want to say it's probably about as deep maybe maybe not as much as the 62 but the 77 definitely put a larger impact in it, a larger hole and kind of a larger uh impact radius there where it blew out the concrete it also did not come through the back it did crack the side here it did crack the side just a little bit and actually now that i'm looking at the uh, 62 from this angle the 62 also did crack the side see if it got in the back if I put it in the sun. So it cracked that one side, but that's it. So really the 62 and the 77 ended up with about the same damage. The 77 was a little bit uh, better, a little bit more damage. And I think this is the test where the 77 is going to shine the most because of its uh, heavier weight. But um, that, I don't know if that, that soft tip is going, you know, hampered it in this test. We'll line up the steel, see if any one of these can shoot through the 3 8 So we've got our 3 8 steel down range and I've just put some wood screws to hold it into the, the fencing there. We'll see if that holds it all. But same loadout as before, 55, 62, 77. I really don't have high hopes for the 77 with it having that soft tip, but you know, who knows? Everyone said the 77 would be where it's at for this. I've scoured the internet for 77 grain full metal jackets. I can't really find them. Most everything is hollow points, soft points, which makes a lot of sense because you want to put the energy in the target and not go through. But uh, for the purposes of this, it just seems like the 77 is getting, you know, kind of wasted here. So here we go. The 55 green up first. I think I hit low on that, but the 62 next. That one hit and fell off, so we'll have to go down and uh, put it back up. Finally, the 77 on 3-8 steel. That was a nice center shot. 
I did hit that first 55 grain low, so I want to put one more into it, if this thing focuses, and try to hit it in the center so that we get a really accurate uh, comparison because the 55 looks like it almost went through. But let's see if I can actually put this right in the center. If I take the safe off. Here is our target, and the first thing that you're probably going to notice is this one right here. This is our 62 grain M855, and it punched directly through this 3 8 plate. You know, in and out, it's kind of gnarly back there, but went straight through. This was the first 55 grain that I shot, and shot low, and kind of came out the side or the bottom of it and i wasn't sure you know how that actually did but the second shot that i hit was much more um in line with what i've seen from 55 grain bullets and i'll kind of come to the side here so you can see the depth of that this is our 70 uh seven grain bullet it uh again it did not penetrate but it put a lot of energy into the target and seems to have a much bigger crater than the other two on the back side you can see the dimples are, are fairly similar other than the 62 that went all the way through and that is different than the experience that i had from the winchester m855s that just could not penetrate this so let's bring down the half inch steel see if the 62 grains do anything to that that's that'll be the only thing that we shoot at the half inch and just give it a shot so this is going to be our half inch plate with the 855 rounds from PMC. I honestly don't think it's going to be able to make it through this. Half inch is a lot of steel, but we will give it a shot and see what happens. And usually when they fall down, it means that they didn't go all the way through. Just as I suspected, it's not going to be able to get through the half inch steel. These are a couple of old ones. This is the one that we just shot. It, it's uh, still warm actually, but even though it didn't go through this half inch of steel, which is a lot of metal, I mean, if you look at that, you put a little bulge in the back of there, but if, and I hope that you can see this on the camera, the way that it just absolutely rips the metal apart. And again, I hope you guys can see that and bulges it out, you know, solid steel that I think is pretty darn impressive. So the thing I think we can take away from today is that the 62 grain M855 absolutely walked away with this competition. One, uh, pretty much in every single one, other than the uh, the concrete, and that could have just been a flaw in the concrete, or it could have been that the 55, uh, when it fragmented, it uh, just did more damage to that concrete. But even so, it still easily won the, uh, the woodblock test. It easily won our steel test. But there's one more thing that I want to compare because the video I did on the 556 uh, 855 versus the full metal jacket, that was using Winchester rounds and I was not able to get through 3.8 steel. So what I want to do, I have a few of those with me. I'm gonna put one more into that uh, 3.8 with the uh, Winchester rounds and just see if there is uh, any difference. Okay guys, these Winchester uh, M855s, I don't have the box, so if you don't believe me that they're Winchesters, I don't, don't really know what to tell you. Um, I have really no dog in the fight and fooling you guys on these things, but we'll send this down and see if it has any difference from the PMC 855s that went through this uh, this 38 steel. So let's take a look. Maybe I need to go back and check the tape on what uh, size metal this went through in the past because this is now our Winchester round. And as you can see, it also went right through as well as our PMC. Uh, easily you can see that on the back side. Now, if you go all the way across our property over there, we have a target hanging in the tree. And I believe that it was 3 8 armor and it was some sort of armor plating. It stopped the 855s in their tracks. Um, at the same time, the uh, the uh, 55 grain full metal jackets, the 223s, went straight through it. And so that was kind of where I got my discrepancy with um, the 855s not going through 3.8s perhaps. I'm not sure, but in any case, the 62 grain easily walked away today as the big time winner. If you guys out there know where I can find a 77 grain full metal jacket or even a, uh, a steel penetrator, although I seriously doubt that those exist because they'd probably be labeled as armor piece or something and not be able to be sold i'd appreciate it i would also appreciate it if you would like this video if you like this type of content if you like seeing this type of stuff uh subscribe to the channel down below especially if this is your first time here and uh, i appreciate you guys watching see you in the next one